from ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Reporting tonight from Czechoslovakia. Good evening. They've been using a lot of adjectives here today like amazing and astounding and in some cases unbelievable. The news is this. Less than two weeks after Czechoslovakia was suddenly overcome by an astonishing drive for change, the Communist Party here has virtually agreed that it will give up its monopoly on power. It has taken only 12 days to drive the Communist Party here into a state of despair. Today, when the opposition and the Prime Minister sat down to negotiate the future shape of the Czech political system, the government was once again on the defensive. Our first report is from ABC's Yardi King. The Civic Forum leader, Václav Havel, had called off the street demonstrations that succeeded in putting the Communist Party on the ropes. Today, when he met for the third time with government ministers, Havel knew that Prime Minister Ladislav Adamets had to deliver. And he did. Adamets promised by next Sunday to come up with a proposal for a new government that would include non-communists. A government minister briefing reporters seemed ready to choke on the words. Pude ovládu. It will be a government uh, uh, constituted prim primarily of experts, of professionals. And then the proposal that seemed to signal the capitulation of the Communist Party here, the agreement to end its monopoly on political power. Uh, taking out the provision for the leading role of the party. And they've even gone further, saying the next generation of Czechoslovaks need not be educated according to Marxist-Leninist ideology. Students today were skeptical and announced their strike is continuing, but they generally welcomed the package of proposals from the government, even if it was not the giant leap forward they had hoped was possible. I think it's one of the first steps towards the victory or something very good and successful for our country. But it really is only the beginning. Leaders of the Civic Forum drove that point home by disclosing seven other demands given the government today. They called for the resignation of President Gustav Husak, the man who took over here in 1968 after the last bid for reforms was crushed. And they vowed to seek the Prime Minister's resignation too, if he could not make the changes happen. Jerry King, ABC News, Prague. Many Czechoslovaks are simply stunned by all that is happening here. And given the fact that they have been ruled by the toughest communist leadership in the Soviet bloc, they are skeptical and even anxious. Is the opposition, they wonder, up to the job of really practicing politics? At the headquarters of the opposition, the Magic Lantern Theater today, the men and women of the Civic Forum were already feeling the pressure. How would they translate the massive wave of enthusiasm into realistic political muscle. The Civic Forum spokesman is the longtime dissident Jan Urban. We all who worked in dissidentia and dissent, we have to learn very hard to behave as normal people without uh, that dissident paranoia. Those Czechs born in the 50s and 60s and 70s have no experience with democracy at all. They are used to totalitarian system they are used to the fact that somebody is controlling them and ruling to them. Ivan Havel is a computer scientist and an amateur politician. His brother, Václav, is the country's most famous dissident. What is uh, very strange here in our country that the political work is uh, often done by people who are not politicians, but artists, writers, and others. My brother with uh, playwright is one of the uh, leading person of uh, the current situation. Václav Havel is not only the most commanding figure in the non-communist opposition, he is the only one with truly national stature. To political euphoria, nelze... Rudolf Bacek, who's a sociologist, says that Havel is the one who can help us in this present crisis. The trouble is that Havel doesn't want to be a politician. Rudolf Bacek, who spent seven years in prison for his own political activity, says that this lack of leadership is a problem now. But he points out, younger people will emerge as natural leaders for the future. And there is certainly no shortage of volunteers to share in the democratic process. These aren't just people talking politics. These are Czechs who only a few weeks ago might well have been risking arrest had the passion of their debate been overheard by the secret police. 
At the opposition headquarters today, some of those involved are worried about being such political amateurs. How do they keep the communist leadership on the defensive if the opposition doesn't have its own experienced politicians? But they are reassured by all that has happened in the last 11 days. Because of all that pressure from these amateurs in the streets, the Communist Party is in an even greater state of disarray than the opposition. Which brings us to this whole question of freedom. The universal word that we've been hearing in the Communist bloc through these many months of radical change, it's such a simple word, freedom. Here in Czechoslovakia, we were curious to know precisely what people mean by freedom. We asked ABC's John Lawrence to ask the Czechs. The people of Prague went back to work today, the events of the last 11 days swirling in many of their minds. The people of Czechoslovakia are not accustomed to their newfound freedom of speech and assembly. They are relatively prosperous by East European standards. The stores are filled with goods to buy. There is no shortage of food to eat. So we asked some of them, what kind of freedom do you want? Yuri Matyashek, a bartender, was trying to get to work this morning. I think people should be able to say what they think. Before the movement started, everyone was afraid to express their opinions because they were afraid of being persecuted. We should be able to have many political parties. The communists should not have the leading role. We asked these two ten-year-olds what freedom means to them. Freedom means that peace will be here, one said, so that we can live freely, said the other, and we need not be afraid. But many people are afraid. The memories of 40 years in a police state are not forgotten in 11 days. This worker said he knows what kind of freedom he wants, but he wasn't going to tell us. Why? I have my reason, he said. These two women know the meaning of freedom and what it is to lose it. They spent part of World War II at Auschwitz in Poland. I was in a concentration camp. It was like being a prisoner in hell. When we got out and returned here in 1945, we thought we were in heaven. A beautiful, marvelous feeling. Such feeling we have now again. And like most of the people we spoke with today, they were too afraid to tell us their names. Freedom may be coming quickly to Czechoslovakia, but many of its people are making the adjustment more slowly. John Lawrence, ABC News, Prague. The future of Czechoslovakia and the future of the Western Alliance were on the White House agenda today. We'll be back with that story in just a moment. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings in Prague. Brought to you by 3M. It's easy to get lost in a storm. You may have been lost in this one. Your medical records, your bank statements. Vital information gone in a flash because it wasn't protected. So 3M invented data cartridge technology, a unique data backup system that protects your information. Because for someone to help you, they have to be able to find you. 3M, innovation working for you. We're here to gently remind you that you can depend on your mom. Philips Milk of Magnesia, the laxative for dependable overnight relief that contains no harsh irritants. So it's gentle. Nobody treats you better than Philips Milk of Magnesia. Mom knows best. Leave it to mom. Kmart celebrates Christmas in America with Maxell T120 VHS videotape. The quality you need at the price you want. $3.33 each. I don't want a few aches and pains to stop me from doing the things I truly love to do. You know, like planting a rose bush or uh, throwing the ball with my grandson. But I do have occasional aches and pains. That's why my good friend Bufferin is there when I need it for pain relief. Bufferin, my brand of aspirin has strong 100% aspirin. It helps me to keep doing the things I want to do. Bufferin, so you can do the things you want to do. Finally this evening, some of those images which stay with a journalist. Every great moment in history produces them. Remember the Statue of Liberty on Tiananmen Square in Beijing earlier this year? 
And only a couple of weeks ago, that first opening in the Berlin Wall. Here it was the ringing of the keys. Thousands of Czechoslovaks shaking their house keys. Their way of telling the Communist Party, the bell tolls for you. The sudden appearance of so many flags. In America, we fly the flag everywhere, but here, and it's the same in Hungary and Poland, the national colors are a symbol of defiance to communist rule. After all, the flag was here first. In Czechoslovakia these days, everyone on the right side of history is wearing a dash of their red, white, and blue. And here in Prague, which unlike Berlin and Warsaw and Budapest was not devastated by World War II, there is such an obvious sense of history. Czechs have a true passion for their capital city. Much of it has been here since the 14th century. A solid reminder now that after a 40-year struggle with an alien ideology, it is the nation which has prevailed. And finally, amid all the slogans we've heard, one offhand remark from a waiter who was asked by the customer if he had any horseradish. This month, freedom, he said. Next month, horseradish. Priorities. That's our report on World News tonight. In light of all the changes here in Eastern Europe and all the speculation about what it'll mean to the U.S. military presence in Western Europe, tomorrow we will be with U.S. forces in West Germany. I'm Peter Jennings. Good night from Czechoslovakia.